Today, I'll be making iodine, one of the most fascinating and colorful elements on the periodic table. In fact, it is surprisingly easy to make, and there are a multitude of ways, but I'm following one in this video. I promise you, with this simple procedure, I'll have that pure fuming metal-like crystal in the end. Although I can tell you that things did go wrong during this procedure, and it was totally unexpected. Iodine is in group 17, and is thus a halogen. It is chemically very similar to bromine and chlorine, two other smaller ones of the halogen family, and all three of them are indeed quite colorful, bromine being orange, chlorine being green, and iodine being a bright purple. Alright, enough of the intro. To start off, I'll go grab the required chemicals, which is like I said very simple, with just three ingredients. Hydrogen peroxide, hydrochloric acid, and potassium iodide, which is in fact added to our table salt. This procedure is a redox reaction, and I'll be performing a recrystallization of the iodine as well. So let's get started. To do this reaction, I'll need to do it outside as I don't have a fume hood, and I won't want any dense purple fumes indoors. Now this is one downside. I'm in Canada, and the winter here is crazy cold, at sub-zero temperatures, and my hot plate stirrer even froze solid to the table. That's why I'm constantly rubbing my hands, and my squirt bottle doesn't even work because it froze as well, five minutes after coming outside. Anyways, I roughly set things up and put onto my hot plate a large 600ml beaker. Into this, I pour in 75 grams of potassium iodide powder, and I dissolve it with a good amount of water. Then, I dropped in a stir bar into the beaker and started mixing the unmixed mixture to make a mixed mixture, also known as dissolving something. When it was all dissolved, I set it aside and moved on to my hydrochloric acid. According to the stoichiometric calculations, I went with about 47 mils of 37% hydrochloric acid. I can then pour this into the solution and keep on stirring it. Now the last one of the chemicals to add is hydrogen peroxide, and I can add it in slowly. Here's where I made a mistake. I don't know why, maybe because of the freezing temperatures outside, but I had my hot plate on medium heat, which was a pretty bad idea because the reaction is already really exothermic and this could promote the sublimation of the iodine. I also added a bit too much of the peroxide at once, causing a bunch of the iodine to form very rapidly, resulting in a quick color change and a huge plume of purple smoke. So I scrambled to go get my round bottom flask condenser and put it on top to condense the vapors into solid iodine crystals. Now no ice cubes could fit in that small 2440 round bottom flask neck, so I went ahead with the plan of just scooping in some snow. Thanks to the small pouring spot of the beaker, I was able to pour in the rest of the hydrogen peroxide without losing much iodine, and I plugged that hole with some paper so that it condenses onto the flask. Now theoretically, any acid could work for this reaction as long as it provides H plus ions, as it is a key part of the reaction. I chose to use hydrochloric, but evidence has shown that this could produce small amounts of chlorine gas. Anyways, I'm outside so I'm gonna be fine. The way this reaction works is that the iodide from the potassium iodide gets oxidized into elemental iodide, and the hydrogen peroxide and acid is used to help with this. The potassium and the chloride ions that come along with the iodide and H+, are omitted in the equation as they are spectator ions. So as you can see here, a bunch of elemental iodine has formed in the beaker, which has fallen to the bottom, along with a bunch of water. The water is also little colored as iodine is sparingly soluble in it. Now in order to purify this iodine, I'm going to need to do a recrystallization, which I have basically already partially done by placing it on the cool round bottom flask. If I take it off, you can see pure iodine crystals formed on it. So I scraped those off and let the beaker cool down so that no iodine vapors will be released in the next step. Now to perform a real recrystallization, I had to get rid of all of that water and leave in the solid stuff, so I poured it through a coffee filter. This worked perfectly, and the small amounts of iodine left on the filter were transferred back into the beaker. Now after scraping off the iodine that has also condensed on the sides of the beaker due to the temperature difference, you can hopefully clearly see into the reaction vessel now. The recrystallization involves a temperature gradient, from hot to cool. Again, on the top I have a recrystallizing flask, and by sublimating the iodine, then recondensing it on the cool surface, it increases its purity. Now after turning it up on max heat, nothing much seemed to happen, but gradually, after a few minutes or so, the beaker started filling up with a bunch of saturated violet iodine vapor. Now I've seen iodine in textbooks, but it's truly a whole other deal to actually see it in real life. Like the vapor is so unbelievably purple it feels fake. I could say that I earned a different perspective to admire just how beautiful an element can be. Also, if you are wondering what this smelled like, 
I'm being completely serious, but it smells like chlorine combined with the smell of rain. So imagine yourself walking outside on a humid summer afternoon after a big rainstorm to a heavily chlorinated pool. So yeah, it smells much like chlorine but with a weird small twist. Now this was when disaster struck. During the recrystallization, I constantly continued scooping in snow to keep the flask cool, and it created the necessary temperature gradient. However, I'm not sure if this is because my beaker isn't high quality enough, or if it's too much stress for even borosilicate glass, but my beaker cracked entirely from the bottom. A bunch of iodine was getting released, and I had to quickly contain it. Unfortunately, this was when my phone shut down due to it being minus 10 outside, so I wasn't able to capture it. But here's the aftermath. Thankfully, it seems that all the iodine has recrystallized onto the flask, and the chunk fell down. I then spent a while scraping out all of the iodine from the glassware to maximize my yield. After a few minutes, I was left with this pile of solid iodine, and so I transferred it into my indoor lab and started crushing it up into smaller pieces. When I felt it was good, I transferred it into a well-sealed container to store it for future use. And there it is, pure elemental iodine. What's funny is that this has a metallic look, like metal crystals, but is actually a non-metal. Anyways, thanks for staying to the end. If you enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing, and I'll see you in the next one.